night you told me that you were actually, the other night you were talking about when in, I think it was 1967 or 68, you went to the Indica Gallery. Oh, that story. Well, uh, yes, I, um, I, I went to the, uh, the Indica Gallery to... <coughs> Uh, see uh, an exhibition by a, a conceptual artist belonging to the Fluxus group. I used to be quite a fan of, I've always been a fan of modern art, but I used to be quite a gallery hopper uh, going around seeing the new shows. And it was a really, really good show. Very light, um, positive, fun. There was a, um, a, 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 a step ladder that you had to walk up to the top and there stuck on the ceiling was a tiny piece of paper which said yes and things of that sort it was really good it was done by an artist i'd never heard of called yoko ono and uh shortly afterwards john lennon went to the same exhibition and history was made Ta -da! um I could go on for about 20 minutes on that. I don't, you know, I don't know what bits to do. Do it. Judge, tell me. How, why, when, what and wherefore the early days of Van de Graaff Generator. Discuss. Huh. Right. Uh, big story condensed into small space. Um, Manchester University, uh, 1967. Uh, um, Freshers' Week. Uh, we there was a, 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 a notice up in the students' union. Anybody who was interested in forming a rock and roll band uh, to go to room three five zero or whatever it was uh, turned up. About twenty or thirty people there. Um, but at that uh, event, I did see a young chap sitting on the floor playing the guitar and singing like most of the other people there but I was struck by Harry, uh, by the very uh, uh, sophisticated and finished uh, style of the song he was singing so I asked him what's that song I haven't heard it who's it by and he told me that he said I wrote it I said have you got any more like that and he said about 35 so I said, why don't we talk about forming a band? And that was Peter, Peter Hamill. Uh, he was writing the most amazing songs or things that to me sounded like uh, fully finished, mature, uh, significant songs. Um, so we talked about this idea for a while. Uh, not that I had much to bring to the party. I was a very, very, very poor drummer at the time. Um, that's really all I could do. I didn't play anything. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, student union uh, and student union gigs. I saw some amazing acts there. Cream, um, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Wonder an amazing selection of bands but the most impressive band that I saw and we used to go I used to go to these gigs with Peter was uh, the crazy world of Arthur Brown that left us totally stupefied and it was so wonderful and strange and as a result I think it's fair to say of, of uh, seeing Arthur this is Vincent Crane on organ um, Carl Palmer, aged 16, apparently, playing drums. Just amazing. We decided that this band, if we ever formed it, uh, would have to be an organ band, not a guitar band. It would be a Hammond organ band. And uh, so that's what we, we, we tried to do. And uh, we made a demo. And uh, one of the good things about the 60s was that you could make a cheap tape of peculiar music, send it off to people, 
and you get a record contract. It's amazing. Um, which is what happened to us. We sent off our very peculiar tape of very peculiar music, and we got a record company, a uh, record contract with Mercury Records. And uh, so we left university, we came to London, and we had all kinds of adventures trying to put a band together in London, adventures involving uh, um, Graham Bond, the amazing organ player who was hired as uh, uh, Mercury Records director of music, uh, and involving black magic and cults and all sorts of excitements and we hung out at the playboy club with spanky and our gang and um what was that band never mind i remember it another time uh but we didn't uh, we, we we tried to record um we were unrehearsed was really Peter and me. Peter could play quite well, and obviously was right. Still was writing wonderful songs, but I really wasn't. Didn't cut the mustard. Um, Quincy Jones came to one of our uh, recording sessions, and we were introduced. I was in, we were introduced to Quincy Jones, who of course was a great hero. Uh, he, I was introduced as. Judge Smith, and he eyed me up and down. He said, where the fuck you get a name like that, boy? We didn't, our recording was not a success. So we decided we had to get some proper musicians in the band. Um, and we had uh, recruited Hugh Banton and Guy Evans and Keith Ellis, who was a proper rock and roller, a bass player, and uh, uh, that, that was really the point when I went, because having been very keen for them to recruit a proper drummer who could actually play a bit, um, I found I really didn't have that much left to do. I was wanting to be a songwriter, but really I was just beginning, whereas Peter was already a mature songwriting artist of extraordinary ability. So. They didn't really need me to, to uh, he didn't really need me to help with the songwriting. I did uh, write some songs with them, but uh, I left to start other bands. So that was me and Van de Graaff Generator. Uh, so uh, uh, apart from kickstarting the whole thing, my uh, contribution uh, was uh, quite limited, shall we say.